today we continue to make our way through Crayola's brush tip offerings. These are the Crayola brush tip markers. I believe I got these off of Amazon. I couldn't find them in stores anymore. There are 32 brilliant colors for fine and full lines. I believe these are single tip markers. And the colors inside are raspberry red, pumpkin orange, orange circuit, golden yellow, yellow, laser ye lemon, Hmm. Kiwi green, emerald seafoam green, teal turquoise surf, blue lagoon, blue azure, plum ultraviolet violet, wild orchid, hot magenta, pink coral reef, apricot tan bronze, brown mahogany, dolphin gray, gray, and black. So one marker, many line widths, and it seems like there's a nice color spread in this 32 color set. And you guys have seen me do, whoa, look at this. They're individually boxed, that's neat. You got, whoa, a little different than what I expected. Oh, they're sorted by color families, kind of, sort of. So you've got kind of your primaries, you've got like your sea tones, autumn tones, and then spring, maybe something like that, or winter, spring, summer, fall? I mean, it doesn't say on the package, but could be, could be. So, kind of want to keep them in these sets. And look, it also has like the individual hangers. I think they repurposed existing boxes, but this window looks a little more utilitarian than you normally see on the Crayola packaging. And this is also not, um, this is part of their rebrand efforts. It's one of their older rebrand efforts. Right now they're doing the Crayola signature that comes in the nice metal tins. This is um, a prior one to that, kind of aimed at the coloring book market. Or I guess you could also, say hand lettering market. Kind of notice that when it comes to adult users, they just skip artists entirely. They don't even try, which is kind of why I'm like really insistent on doing these. So they feature the black body. It's kind of a step. I'll go grab um, one of the blend in shades. And then I have, nope, is it the blend in shade? It is these. Cause I've noticed, so this is what I mean. This is one of the signature boxes. Um, and I have some more signature markers coming actually. So this is their current branding. It's actually fairly, fairly classy, fairly consistent with the brush double-sided markers that like Tombow and Kuratake do. These still look kind of like Crayola super tips or Crayola fine tips. Not that that's necessarily a, a bad thing, but you can really see the evolution towards um, appealing to an adult market, which, you know, so long as it doesn't add to the cost of the product, or at least significantly add without improving the product itself, it's not a bad thing. So it has a ventilated cap, which is important, just in case you have kids playing with these. Ooh, a little hard to uncap. And a nice brush tip. We'll check that out in a minute. And then the back where you can post it. The color name is on here. It's actually brush, pincel, pincu, dolphin gray, gris dolphin, gris dolphin. So I like that they have multiple languages. I do like that they have multiple languages um, on their brushes. I wish that had been, I mean, on their markers, I wish that had been a thing when I was a kid, just because that's cool. So we have 32 of these and I'm going to swatch them by set and that way so i have watercolor paper here and this was provided thanks to the generosity of my patrons on patreon made it possible for me to purchase supplies like this when we do art supply reviews we don't always think about the consumables right like paper so I'm using watercolor paper because, and this is a cellulose, that means um, tree pulp watercolor paper because it's gonna be a little bit tougher. And usually water-based markers have a tendency to abrade the paper surface because they don't evaporate as fast as alcohol markers. So I find that this kind of paper is really nice for using with your water-based markers, especially if you've had abrasion issues in the past. I believe it is a fiber tip which is gonna fray in time, but considering what I paid for these, which was $20.28 over on Amazon, and you get 32 markers, eh, 
you know what? I paid 14 something for the 100 set, but those are the super tips. I don't know, are these really worth the additional money? I do know having specialty brush tips and the fact that these are kind of a new product haven't really gotten a lot of press or seen a lot of use. All that makes things like this a little more expensive because mass production offsets cost. And like just about every school kid is required to go out and buy Crayola markers, Crayola colors. They're at least required to go out and buy crayons and markers. And I'm going to label these after I swatch the set. But so far, the brush isn't terrible. It's not as flexible as I had hoped. You can definitely tell this is sort of the predecessor to the markers I just showed you guys, the brush and detail markers, which are going for $11.79 on Amazon right now, so. And you can check out the video review of those by clicking here. I do think those are the better markers, but there aren't as many colors as this set. And if you wanted more color options without, you know, using super tips, if you wanted to keep the brush tip, this could be like a good filler for your marker collection. So I'll swatch. And these are really hard to recap. I note this because I'm having trouble and I'm a 31 year old adult woman. Um, I can only imagine how hard these would have been for me to pop open if I was 12 or even younger than that. And you know, wanting to color my comics or something, which is what I would have bought these for at the time. And I certainly would have bought these. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine if you're like popping caps and putting them back on, these will be kind of tiring for younger or maybe arthritic hands or just, just tiring period. However, I kind of hesitate to critique these too much since it does seem like Crayola kind of is phasing them out. Okay, so holding them in place. You guys can see how the caps compare to the colors inside. I think it's always important to swatch your Crayola markers and crayons, I guess. We'll color pencils too, because the body doesn't always reflect what's inside. So we've got dolphin gray. And I'll just time lapse this so you guys can watch but not be bored completely to death. So I've got all 32 colors swatched. I am a little disappointed because when I saw apricot, tan, bronze, and brown on the package, I was excited because I thought we were finally going to get some multicultural colors in a brush pin form factor. Um, I've been kind of just so 
Crayola, I would really, really like to see you improve your inclusion of skin tones. I know there's the multicultural set. In fact, I'm gonna pull it up right now because the multicultural colors might be available in the super tips, but they're not labeled as such. It's not like, and now with 10 skin tones or anything like that. Multicultural. And they're certainly not in available in the the dual tip markers, the brush and detail markers. And honestly, this is not tan. My camera's kind of adjusting it. I don't know why it's doing that, but that's not tan. It doesn't even match the color on the cap. This is not bronze. Move it all down a shade. This would be bronze. This kind of tan. This is just another shade of very pale. And whether you're a kid or you're an adult, you can have all these like, like laser lemon and ultraviolet. And I know people like neons, right? But like you can have all these neons, but your skin tone selection is still pretty meh. Mahogany and brown are pretty good, but like I really want to see more selection, more skin tone colors. So right now the multicultural colors are available in the ultra clean washable markers. I actually did a review of the multi multicultural set of ultra clean washable markers over on the blog because I'd hoped that I could use them as watercolor markers the way you can use the super tips and you can't. They behave terribly, which is really disappointing. Um, multicultural crayons. Multicultural color pencils. And then you can get like different variations of that, right? But they're not available as like a super tip extender pack, right? Like, like not everybody needs to have the 100 pack of super tips. And it would be nice to be able to buy just a pack of skin tones, like a bonus pack of skin tones in the same tip or in this brush tip. Please get on that Crayola. Um, I don't really think it's a lot to ask. And since children all over the US use your products, it would be really nice to see more inclusion of a variety of skin tones, especially in the brush tip markers, which are honestly so much easier for older kids and teens to use. It's easier on their hand. They can cover larger surfaces. They can get finer details in. They're so much easier to use than the super tips or the, the big ultra clean washable markers. So I will keep mentioning that forever until Crayola hears my cry and accommodates that complaint. I think it's a legitimate complaint. I think I've mentioned it almost every time too. I was really excited because the 100 pack does have more, <laughs> more human skin tones. But honestly, you shouldn't have to buy a 100 pack to get skin tones. So there's a few different things I want to test now that I've finished my rant. I want to try a rainbow blend. And with 32 markers, I'd have to completely reorganize these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a skin tone blend, which will be easy. I mean, we don't even get any good like, I mean, coral reds are pretty decent. All right. Yeah, we do get some good blush colors. And I'm doing this just marker to marker without using anything to blend first. And most kids watercolor marker, kids water base markers include glycerin, which can be helpful. Okay, so obviously quote unquote tan should not go next after peach or apricot. It should probably be tan for tan first and then apricot. You can layer them though, and you can get a bit of color influence from that. I'm sure me complaining about skin tones is gonna get somebody commenting that I would complain about everything, even Crayolas, but it really means a lot to me to see a variety of skin tones for kids. That's important. All right, so let's try, what are you, apricot? And this is no blending back and forth. This is just to see how, because some of the juicier Crayola markers will kind of blend back and forth. And then bronze, which is really a tan color. I know I'm gonna carp forever. And then brown. Okay, let's do, there's multiple ways to blend Crayolas and these caps are really hard. Just doing these tests, pulling them off, the ridges are kind of biting into my hand, so. 
I'm gonna do one method of blending where we cover the entire area we're going to want to color, which is typically how I how I handle things when I color with these kind of markers. And then on top of that layer, that way you get the influence from the prior layer. So it does not such a stark contrast. And then finally the brown. Now this is when the paper really starts to kind of get torn up because you're putting layer after layer of very wet marker on top of layer after layer of very wet marker. So if you're using a thin paper or kind of a cheap paper like newsprint or like printer paper, it's not going to work as well. That's why I'm using the watercolor paper. You can use mixed media paper. Something with a smooth finish like cardstock might actually be really good, but then your paper might start to buckle. And then I'm gonna blend back out. I think these are not quite as blendy as the super tips are for some reason. So that is the skin tone color into color blend. Not very easy to make a smooth transition with those. And they're sorry, starting. I'm gonna end up with a blister just from doing this, and then we will. But you know, only so much complaining one can do because they've kind of redone this line. You get fewer colors now, um, and you definitely get fewer skin tones. Now I'm gonna grab colors from a few of the different compartments. Try to do a nice gradient blend. You might even decide that you want to completely resort your markers into something that's more usable for you, like all warm colors together, etc. I mean, you know, there's no labeling on it, so you can kind of do whatever works for you. Even if there was labeling on it, you can kind of do whatever works for you. You do you and what works for you. And there is no shame in anybody who tries to tell you otherwise you needs to mind their own business. Got a spectrum of warm colors. Let us see, what do I have here? I have, come on, come on, yellow, golden yellow, orange, orange circuit. And I'm basing this based on the swatches, pumpkin and then red, not the names and not the caps. Look at these, we have what, three oranges and they're not that different. We have, I mean, orange and orange circuit are almost the same color. Cause I was thinking orange circuit would be like, a, a neon like a highlighter and I'm looking to see if I have one and I don't have one handy and it's not. Now if you use a blender marker like a Tombow ABT or an Ecoline blender marker you may have different experiences than I do getting nice blends. And if you enjoy using these kind of markers frequently it's not a bad investment to make. I mean, you can get the Tombow ABT blenders open stock over at Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama. Uh, Michaels might even have them. I know they have the packaged ones where they used to. A lot of art supply stores actually will carry the Tombow ABTs. You could use a Sakura Koi blender. Pretty much any water-based marker blender will help blend these. And you feel like a rock star because you were able to get some pretty nice results, some very similar to alcohol marker results. And you only spent like $14 for a pack of 32 and then $3 maybe tops for a blender. They will also leave kind of a residue on the paper. So there's really only so many layers you can do. And this is what six I might be pushing at. And you can kind of tell when that's happening. See when it pushes. Oh, I have to zoom in a lot more for you to see that. When you see how it me kind of pushes the color around, that's kind of when you know the papers hit its hit its limit, right? You're like it's not putting down new layers or anything like that. And that's that's just the glycerin in these sort of markers doing that. So I have a water brush handy. I also grabbed my Ecoline colorless blender and I don't really feel like swatching every color again. Let's do, let's do an initial test before I invest that much time and energy. 
So we're going to try it with red. Red's a good color. Oh, I must have had something nasty in this brush. I will. I apologize for that. You guys can't see it super well, but it looks like gross mud because I was doing white corrections with the proof white. So I will clean that out. Okay, hopefully second time is the charm. And I think you can also see that even by just this little bit of wear and tear, we're starting to tear up our brush. And I'm trying to be gentle. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, so being dye-based, they are, of course, water-soluble. They're washable. But you can blend them out with water in a water brush, which kind of adds a lot of variety to how you might work with these. And I love variety. Now we're going to try the Eco Line. And it's water and glycerin. And you can blend it out also. Now, you guys should go check out my Eco Line video because um, in the field test, I discovered that once you start blending with this, you can't really do a lot of blending with this. So you kind of have to pick how you want to treat your Eco Line markers. That might also be the case with your dear Crayolas. So I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick a couple colors that might be kind of weird once you add water, like separate out. That's usually a pretty good indication of whether or not you can use markers like this as watercolor markers. All right, not as nice as the red, but not bad. And you know, once I've reviewed these and I have one more set of Crayola markers, markers coming in that I plan on review, reviewing, I will have hit every brush marker Crayola makes. I also reviewed, or did a, hello cat, did an unboxing swatch of their little paintbrush pins, which I actually really like. They have really nice brushes. I wish they came in more colors. Nice brushes for what they are and for what you pay. Ooh, yes, highlighter yellow. Okay, so there's a little bitty bit of color separation in Plum, not too, too much. I kind of figured they would be, there would be, it's one of those colors. Basically any of these colors, which are like, not even tertiary colors or so, so far out there, um, that's when you're gonna start to see these sort of things split out into different dyes. And these aren't designed to be watercolor markers, but it's really handy to have that as an option. So I think I'm gonna call it a day because I've kind of figured a few things out with these. I look forward to seeing you guys in our field test. I'm gonna use these as a combination watercolor water-based marker to hopefully get the widest range of results possible. And I hope you guys will check out some of my other great Crayola videos here on this channel where I try to show people how to actually work with these materials. It's not just me ragging on Crayola, it's not like that. Um, if you are interested in seeing a comparative over, overview, yeah, a comparative overview of these markers, the Crayola brush and detail markers, the Crayola paint brushes, and the new markers I'm waiting on, let me know, oh, and super tips, of course. Let me know in the comments below. I'll gather up all my Crayola markers that I have access to, dig up those old multicultural markers if I haven't home, rehomed them with somebody who could use them more, and I'll do a comparative overview for you guys in case you're curious. Um, if you've gotten through this whole video and you're like, I thought you reviewed professional grade art supplies. Um, that's a legitimate thing. The reason I review these inexpensive, non-toxic, accessible art supplies is that professional grade art supplies can be really expensive. And a couple years ago, I basically made it my mission to find good inexpensive art supplies or ways that you can use inexpensive art supplies in a like it will create art that you actually like and you're not just kind of shuffling along. Um, so I've been kind of working on that bit by bit, creating tutorials on how to use these, giving as honest as I can reviews. I'm not just trying to tear up kids' art supplies. It's not, I mean, these are more marketed at adults, but you know what I mean? That's not, I don't get joy out of just being awful and mean all the time. But if there are good products out there, I want you guys to be able to find them for yourselves, for your kids. If you've got a budget, if you want to encourage a young artist, because nothing is 
nothing is, there's things that are more discouraging, but it's very discouraging to be a young artist and have art supplies that fight you. And you're not yet good enough at art to realize that these are the art supplies fighting you. And it's not just that you're awful. So I'm always trying to find stuff that's good for kids, good for adults, good for people who maybe can't deal with the fumes of alcohol markers or can't shell out $7 a marker for Coke. I know you can get them for cheaper and I know you can buy Prism colors and I know you can buy Blick Studio markers, but you guys know what I mean. I'm trying to find good budget alternatives for people of all ages. That's important to me. So uh, there will be more professional art supply reviews soon. For more, you can go check them out at natosoup.blogspot.com. I am taking down the blog in 2019, so please, if you've been putting it off, go check it out. Enjoy it while it's there and free to read. And I will hopefully see you guys again soon with the field test. And maybe if you guys let me know you want to see it with the overview. Bye, guys.